All right, so what we're going to talk about tonight, um, basically I'm going to go in over an overview of uh, uh, how to use web Bluetooth and how to, use, uh, uh, how to use it in Angular, and we'll do a quick demo. Uh, so who here, a uh, quick show of hands, who have, uh, has heard of uh, IoT, Internet of Things? Quick show of hands. I mean, mostly everybody, right? I mean, it's basically a catch-all nowadays of, uh, of uh, um, all the things are connected uh, who has actually used it into an application, like play with it. Like it could be a lot of things. It could be an Alexa recipe. It could be, uh, it could be a lot of things like any inter uh, connected uh, devices, no? Okay, cool. So it's great because this way I'll, I'll, I'll see, I'll show you how it's actually not so difficult to uh, use them uh, inside of a, an Angular app and uh, how uh, accessible it is nowadays. Uh, so my name is Xavier Lozanguez. Uh, I'm actually a freelance software engineer right now at French Toasters, which is my own company. Uh, you can find me on, uh, on Twitter, GitHub, and uh, LinkedIn, uh, usually x.lozanguez, uh, and also my website, xavier.lozanguez.com. Um, and uh, this is a quick uh, uh, introduction. So from Wikipedia, what is Internet of Things? So it's uh, how do you... Uh, interconnect the devices that are identifiable uh, uniquely, and how do you uh, have them access the inter existing internet infrastructure? So it's uh, it's very particular. Like yeah, there's a unique devices. There are like uh, a couple of notions in there, and uh, and also uh, the notion of how it actually going to it's going to uh, connect with the internet, and uh, how to leverage those different. Uh, pieces uh, so that we create richer lives. Because ultimately, uh, Internet of Things is here to create seeming, uh, enhance lives, enhance uh, experiences with our everyday uh, uh, devices. So sir, uh, there's a few examples out there. Uh, who here has played with, uh, has some uh, smart light bulbs, uh, things like that at home, like that change colors. Um, so there, that's one of the application of uh, Internet of Things. Uh, here you see somebody is using uh, uh, an application to change the color of the light bulb to kind of set up the mood, uh, depending on what's uh, what's going on. Um, so they can react to uh, uh, the external lum luminosity, uh, what's the ambient lighting condition to kind of like uh, make people less uh, tired. And also, if you have music nowadays, they they can actually listen to the music and then like set up uh, kind of disco in your living room, which is pretty cool. And then uh, also the room presence, like why is your light on when you're actually not there? Um, another example, thermostat. Who here has a, a smart thermostat? Right? Yep. So uh, there are a plethora of them, and they are they whole like kind of do the same thing. They they kind of like uh, um, good. Um, they kind of like uh, set up the, 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 the condition of your home, depending on your location and the weather condition outside, temperature and humidity, these kind of things. And also if you are uh, at home or actually nearby, like if you are about to reach your home 30 minutes before you leave, like some thermostat can actually start heating the, the, the home when you, are, uh, when you are about to arrive. Then there's vacuum cleaners. Who here has a Roomba with a cat on it? Who actually our cat? If you have a cat, it's a great experience to actually buy a Roomba just for your cat, because that's the kind of things you can do. They actually really enjoy that. Uh, so there is the uh, Roomba. What they do and other vacuum cleaners, they they actually connect with the internet to kind of uh, uh, do some data analytics and uh, and based on their own uh, configuration, they optimize the path that they take and these kind of things. Um, and they also can, uh, they can rely on the resident present, presence so that they actually activate when you're not around. These are also other things. The cat really enjoys Roombas. There is also speakers. We are Alexa, Google Home, these kind of things. There, there are many applications that they, are, they come up with. And that's actually the most resourceful uh, application because you can now uh, do your shopping. You can have games that are running on there. There are music, obviously. They can play music. And then they can review the news and countless other things. And many more. So anything that's deemed intelligent, smart, connected, and other uh, uh, catch, uh, catch name around that, there basically means that they are 
using, to some extent, some Internet of Things capabilities. So there's car, fridge, ovens, washer, dryers, home security, and watches. However, uh, some of the shortcomings of IoT is that every device uh, implements its own uh, uh, application, which makes it a little bit uh, restricted in terms of the features that it operates. Uh, it's essentially, like we've seen on the, on the user that is setting the, the, the color of a, of a light bulb, you, you're just using it as a remote. Um, it can be difficult to interconnect different uh, devices unless you are actually buying from the same uh, brand, in which case they, they, they have their own ecosystem. And um, they are actually a competing co uh, communication protocol. Uh, the one that we are going to talk about uh, and do a demo around is using uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, BLE, but uh, there's actually other uh, implementation of a, of a commun communication, and ultimately, uh, it's something that's been seen over and over again. You know, you develop a new standard, and all of a sudden, there's just one more standard. So to kind of answer the short, those shortcomings, uh, companies like Google, uh, Amazon, and uh, others have been uh, implemented like an, a whole ecosystem and uh, providing access for these devices to uh, connect to one another using their, their platform. So you have Google Home, Apple HomeKit, Samsung SmartThings, Wink Hub, and Amazon Echo to cite the main ones. But what about, what about the web? So what we're going to look into uh, is uh, the capabilities that are coming with your browser. Not every browser, actually. And we'll, see in, uh, we'll look into that. But Web Bluetooth is basically a standard that has been, is currently under development. There's some level of completeness. Um, and uh, it's actually providing the ability for you to interconnect with a, a Bluetooth uh, a device uh, directly using the browser. So this way, uh, as a result, you don't need to, you, to develop your own application. And this is basically a uh, uh, checker. Uh, I quote here, uh, Web Bluetooth enables uh, the user to control the BLE device directly from your browser without having to install an app first. So think about PWAs who, um, and how to actually access your device without building everything and have to ship an app and, and all these kind of things. Warnings, obviously, uh, it's under heavy development. Uh, it's been in the work for quite some time, and act, but there's some level of completeness already. You have the ability to check the status uh, on GitHub. It's also BLE protocol only, only Bluetooth, low, em uh, low energy protocol only. So the, that's uh, the one um, protocol that's supported. And then there's a limited support in terms of browser. Uh, Chrome's uh, from 61 and plus. Uh, Android Chrome 62 and plus, and then Samsung Internet 6.2 plus, which is basically a Samsung version of a, of a Chrome browser, essentially. And then there's security risk, and uh, there's a post. It explains kind of like what are the um, the security concern around the Bluetooth, uh, uh, web Bluetooth, and uh, what can you do with with it? Because there is, uh, if you have access to the device, and uh, depending how the, the the device has been implemented uh, inside of a um, inside of a, the service, you can basically change the configuration and do some very bad things. So uh, there are definitely things that you want to look into. And that actually the implementation itself kind of like limit as a result. And as a result, you have like a, a, a manual pairing that needs to occur. So let's build something. So let's talk about those two, 2018 ones. Uh, new year, new you, right? So we're gonna, what we're going to implement, and uh, I have my daughter here. I will do a demonstration. She's eager to come in. All right. And uh, what we'll demonstrate is basically how to implement a heart rate zone tracker for high-intensity training. High-intensity training is basically a training way that is based on your heart rate. And we'll look into how it looks, what it looks like right now. So what we have is uh, your heart rate maximum. And then depending on of your age, so very basic formula, 220 minus your age gives you your heart rate max. And then we have five zones of training that gives you like a kind of a color and gives you some indication about how you are working out. So prerequisite before we go into the implementation, I'm going, I need to talk to you about GAT server, GAP services, and characteristic. What is, what is it? And they are essentially part of the Bluetooth uh, specs. So what we call uh, 
get our generic attributes. They are basically uh, a way to define how uh, data is structured and also exchanged between the devices. So between uh, on, the, on, the, on the chart, you'll see get client versus get uh, and get server. Essentially, it's what, which, which device is actually taking the measurement and which device is actually uh, uh, fetching the, the information from that device. So depending on your configuration, you can either be a server and, or a client. In our case, we'll look into it. Uh, uh, the device that she is actually wearing is the, is the, is the, the server, and then the, the browser becomes the client. Uh, Gap, uh, we'll talk less about that. It's just a generic access profile. It specifies um, how uh, the connection occurs, basically, and uh, which, uh, which device uh, to, uh, you are able to connect to. For more information, there's a tutorial on Adafruit, and uh, the link would be in the slide as well. So for our purpose, we're going to look into how the guard service, the heart rate guard service, is defined. And those are essentially like Bluetooth uh, specs that are standard. So any manufacturer, if they want their device to be useful for, uh, for application, the one that they need to uh, implement things this way so that the data is expected a certain way. This is a, a kind of a diagram. Uh, there is, uh, in our app, the browser is a client. There is data from the monitor, which is the server. And our service contains three things, three characteristics. It contains a heart rate measurement, the sensor location and the heart rate control point. In our case, we only, want to, we only care about uh, the measurement itself. There are numerous other services uh, that you can look into. Uh, same thing on the Bluetooth specs. They all implement their own way of uh, communicating data and the format of, the, of that data. Let's talk about our workflow real quick of our tracker. So the first step, there's a manual pairing that needs to occur. This is device pairing. This is how how we are going to have access to the GAT server from the device, right? You're going to select the device we want to get the server from. Then we are going to look into what services are available. And here, what we're going to look into is the heart rate service. Then we have uh, the characteristic. And here, we're going to uh, dig into the heart rate measurement that the service from the server is going to provide. And then after we're going to get this value, we're going to parse it and display it. Thankfully we have uh, uh, an implementation that has been done uh, that's called Angular Web Bluetooth, which is observable-based implementation of the Web Bluetooth uh, standard. Um, you'll find it here, and that's what we're going to use. What it provides, essentially, is the Web Bluetooth module right, that you're going to uh, inject into your module and, uh, and initialize, initialize with a for root method. And that's going to provide you with a Bluetooth core service. The Bluetooth core service is basically what you're going to use to fetch uh, the, the server to do the pairing, to do the exploration, uh, which is called discover. And then we are going to look into which service we are looking into, and then after uh, process through our workflow from the top down. So let's look a little bit of what it looks like in the code before we go into the demo. Uh, so here we are going to look into uh, list all the devices that are around. And actually, I modified that code slightly because with everybody like wearing some, having some sort of Bluetooth, we would have like a, a, a too many uh, listed when we we'll go through the demo. But you can either accept all the devices or filter from the, with the one that you are actually interested into your app. In our case, would be the uh, hardware service. And then we, we can list optional services. You want to see which kind of things are available, but you don't necessarily count on. That's optional. So this is the pairing, the discover and the pairing, and we look at, we look at what it looks like in a minute. Then what we're going to do, we're going to fetch the service, fetch the characteristic within that service, fetch the value, pass the value, and then return, render. Demo time. I did this just in case demo we had some hurdles, but basically when we are, that's the, that's what the app looks like. Um, where we first go through a selection of our heart rate, and I'm actually I'm going to try the demo right now, and this we will see it. All right, so here I'm going to press. This is a gigantic button, basically, and immediately what we we'll, what we see is all the devices that I'm looking into, and in our case I filter already, so I just. I just get the one that gives me the heart rate service. And I'm going to select it from the list. And then you see that little icon. It means I'm paired with a web Bluetooth. 
What's going to happen now, it's going to fetch her heart rate, current heart rate. And right now, she's resting. Well, she's in the light. She might be a little bit shy right now. Now we're going to get activated, OK? Don't face me. You remember what we did? Jumping jack. Ready? All right, let's go, let's go. Faster, faster, faster. Bring it up. Come closer. Come closer to me. See, it's coming up a little bit. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, green, green. All right, let's make it right. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right, now calm down. It should come down. All right, so basically, uh, the, the way uh, it works is just it's observing with that. Oh, she got come back. <laughs> Be fine. She's getting better. Okay. You good? High five. Good. Excellent. So that's, so that's basically uh, uh, what. It's, every time it's getting value, it's getting pushed to the, to the application and the, uh, through the observable. Then we, we have like some two-way binding. I mean, things are uh, easy uh, then, uh, to implement on our end. And try it at home. So right now, the only thing that I'm missing is that you need to, you're supposed to enter your age, because as you see, like it was 220 minus your age. Right now, it's hard-coded. I'll put something like a little prompt. And uh, you can try it. It's our own Firebase app. And uh, the code is accessible there. So feel free to dig into it. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much.